All right. Am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Good evening, everyone. So, like you know, that we are going to organize a lecture on Canadian literature. Uh, and the speaker for today's session uh, is Himanshi. Himanshi is a PhD scholar at BHU. Besides, uh, she has also qualified GATE and uh, UGC NATE. Uh, she had done her master's also from BHU. So she will be the speaker for today's session. Um, so Himanshi, are you there? You can begin now. Session is all yours. Yeah, hello, everyone. Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Sharu. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, Sharu, please turn off your mic. Yeah. So uh, I hope you all are doing well and preparing for the exam. So the GATE exam is around the corner. So I hope you have filled the form for GATE. This lecture is going to help you in NET exam as well as in GATE exam. And by qualifying these exams, as you know, what are the benefits of qualifying these exams? So I think that this lecture is going to help you a lot. And uh, I have covered all the major writers here. Uh, there are various other writers which I have not covered, but the writers and the way I will teach you to uh, go for these writers and read these writers, this will help you immensely in preparing for the exam and preparing notes uh, for these, uh, uh, for your uh, future uh, prospects. Okay, so I am presenting my screen. Uh, if you will tell me, uh, is it visible to you all? Yeah, ma'am, visible. Okay. So, uh, I hope you all have uh, studied the Canadian literature somewhere or the other. If you are doing masters, so it is going to be there in your syllabi. So, today we are going to start with the basic background regarding what is Canadian literature. So, as you know, that there are two languages which are being spoken in Canada these days, which is uh, French and English. So, Canada is a bilingual country and uh, these Canadian writings are basically uh, reflecting on Canadian perspective, uh, which is uh, they are talking about nature, frontier life and uh, moreover on uh, about Canada's position in the world. So there has been writings which are being written by the writers of Canada. They, these include uh, diaries, notebooks, letters, travel and exploration accounts and accounts of interactions with the native people who have been li uh, living there since a long time. And uh, as you all know that there has been a various anthems and hymns of patriotism being written there. So the first book uh, written in Canada was the history of Emily Montag, which was uh, a realistically written uh, account of Frances Moodbrook, who is a wife of an army chaplain. And he, the, in that book, it is given about, uh, it is written about the history of Quebec during that time. Okay. So now I'll talk about the major writers since uh, we all have read about uh, uh, it, that it is it belongs to a post-colonial country. So the colonial if, uh, effect and dominance can be seen in the writings of these writers. So I have taken the major ones such as Margaret Lawrence. So Margaret Lawrence was born in 1926 and she died in 1987. She's a Canadian novelist and short story writer and also a founder of Writers Trust of Canada. She used the pseudonym Steve Lancaster for publishing her poetry in the university and she also became associated with an uh, intellectual movement which was basically a leftist intellectual movement known as social gospel. And uh, we all know be her because of her famous novel, that is The Stone Angel. I hope you must have heard the name of Stone Angel. And do read the summary of Stone Angel in detail because the uh, in-depth questions are being asked these days. So her novels are basically set in Manitoba or a small town called Manawaka. So uh, if there is a question in the exam that who writes the Manawaka series, so you have to name it that the Margaret Lawrence does. Okay, so in Stone Angel, what happens that there is a lady named Hagar Shipley and she is a 90-year-old woman who is living along with her son, uh, 
uh, here I have given you the explanation of that work. Like this uh, work is set in Manavaka, Manitoba, which is a fictional town. And the sto- it is a story of Hagar Shipley, who is a 90 years old woman. And she is living her life uh, uh, as an independent woman. And she doesn't want to put her burden on someone. But this makes some, her somewhat arrogant. And she starts feeling that her children are not giving her due respect. And they are treating her as, a, uh, as a somebody unwanted. So what happens? There is a kind of uh, misunderstanding. And her son uh, thinks that for her betterment, we should put her in a nursing home. So her son Marvin and his wife Doris, they send her to a nursing home. So there she goes and she starts feeling as if she is a love lawn and she has been always suppressed in her life. And her dead son, uh, she remembers her dead son John and thinks that John was a better son. And she goes to a stranger one day and starts telling about her life that how I came to uh, become such a stone hearted woman who has no feelings, no sentiments for anyone. And now I don't want to go back to my home. So uh, what happens that uh, that stra- uh, by talking to that stranger, she realizes that the, throughout these years, she didn't care for her children. She always cared for herself. But she is unable to do that as well. So she is having a kind of misunderstanding and she realizes it at that very moment. And when her son Marvin comes, should she tells her that he she tells him that uh, okay, you are my favorite son. Uh, you did all everything which a uh, son needs to do for a mother. But now uh, I am not in a uh, state to give you all my affection. But uh, I will say that don't become a stone-hearted man like I became. So it is not clear at the end whether she lives or she dies. But her son comes to rescue her and to take her back home. So that's the story which is telling about the women. uh, And it is, you can say, proto-feminist work. So it is talking about the women and their uh, existential crisis. Okay, the next work is Diviners, which is the rewriting of Shakespeare's Tempest. So the uh, protagonist here is Morag Gunn, who is a very fiercely independent writer. And he also grew up in Manawaka, Manitoba. And what happens that uh, Morag has a very difficult relationship with her daughter, Peep, and her lover, Jules Torener. Okay, and what happens that he's tries to capture his daughter's freedom and tries to make her feel as if she is not having any own existence of herself and tries to rule her life. And the girl is constantly fighting for her freedom. So it is also called as a Kunzle Roman because he is a writer here. Uh, Can you tell me what is a Kunzle Roman? A novel with key. Mm, no, that's Roman Eclef. What is the difference between Kunzle Roman and Buildings Roman? Anybody? Okay, so Buildings uh, Roman basically. Buildings yeah. Roman is a story of a, a narrator uh, or journey of the narrator or a hero. And Kunzle Roman is a story of a journey of the writer. Of an artist, not a writer. He can be, uh, uh, he can be doing uh, uh, music or he, um, he can be a painter. So, uh, of an artist, you can say. Okay. So, she has written various other works uh, as uh, Out of Africa is also a film adaptation uh, by Lor- uh, done by, by of the work of Lawrence. And she has written various important works sh- such as The Side Jordan, uh, again The Stone Angel, and it is rewriting of Shakespeare's King Lear. It is a psychological novel. Okay. And the next work is The uh, Jest of God, The Fire Dwellers, Jason's Quest, the Diviners. The Diviners, as I told you, is a retelling of Shakespeare's Tempest. And she has also written a various short story collections. But I have given this one here because it has been asked in the exam. So A Bird in the House. And it is based on the stories of her living in her own grandfather's house. Okay. 
is it clear to all of you do you want to ask anything let's not make it one sided conversation uh, you can also ask questions or give your insights if you have read the stone angel or the diviners i'm not your teacher i'm just here to share my knowledge and uh, to make you uh, revise these topics so if you want you can share your insights if you have read this novel anyone is it clear to you yes ma'am Okay. Okay. Next, we will move to Alice Munro. Alice Munro was born in 1931, and she is a Canadian short story writer and a Nobel Prize winner of 2013. Can write first Canadian writer. She is the first Canadian writer who has won a Nobel Prize. Okay, and she has also got Man Booker International Prize in 2009, and she is also called as our Chekhov by Sin. Tia Ozick and Munro's uh, most popular work, as we know, is Dance of Happy Shades, which has won highest literary prize, which is Governor General's Award. And in uh, 1978, she has published a collection of interlinked stories named as What Do You Think You Are, and which has also got Governor General's Award. In 2006, Munro's story The Bear Came. over the mountain was adapted for the screen okay so now i will talk about some important stories of alice munro the dance of the happy shades lives of girls and women something i have been meaning to tell you what do you think you are progress of love friend of my youth the love of a good woman hate friendship courtship love ship marriage this one has been asked in our exam okay so do remember this one run away which was published in 2004 so i have written these works in chronological order and you have to memorize these works because they keep on asking some uh, popular works they do ask and in depth questions are being asked from those books uh, but from these unknown works also they nowadays they are asking uh, they, they, they uh, those questions are very superficial you can say but it is important to know at least know the names and what are they like they are uh, stories or what genres do they belong to okay so now we will talk about dance of happy shades uh, as you know alice munro is famous for short stories so it is a collection of 15 short stories and the title is taken Palestine. from gluck oreo and euripides and it is talking about uh, a story of gender roles okay it is basically focusing on gender roles and there is a very famous story boys and girls which is there in this collection and it is questioning out the various gender identities we have been given by the society the next work i am going to talk about is who do you think you are okay and it was published outside canada as beggars maid it is also a building roman as i told you a building roman is talking about a journey of a child or a uh, the character from childhood to adulthood okay and it is talking about the progress which he has made in the life so it is a building roman and it is a collection of 10 short stories then the next work is moons of jupiter so there are two children janet and judith who are talking about their dying father and they are talking about the various moons which are there on jupiter so they are talking about ganymed and they are psychologically dealing with the trauma which they are going through their father is dying due to some disease so this book is also giving you a psychologically insight the psychological insight of how the the small kids are affected when some uh, kind of disease or some kind of misery comes to in their life okay then the next work is lives of girl and women so the protagonist name is del jordan and it is a coming of age novel the next writer i'm going to present is margaret atwood till now if you have any question you can uh, ask or we'll do the question as uh, we'll i take the question as at the end of the class okay 
So next writer I'm going to discuss is Margaret Atwood. She is very important because uh, nowadays a lot of questions come. Last attempt which I gave, uh, there was uh, this chronological question of Margaret Atwood surfacing bodily harm, alias Grace and Blind Assassin. All these books were mentioned there and we had to arrange them in chronological order. So you have to remember the chronology. You have to remember the dates, especially of the books which have won some prizes. Okay. So uh, Margaret Eleanor Atwood is a Canadian poet, novelist and literary critic. She is also an environmentalist, as we all know. And she has won various uh, awards such as uh, Booker Prize, which is uh, she has won. She has won Booker Prize for which two books? And one more. Anyone? The blood assassination. Blind assassin. Assassin. And one more. Yes, ma'am. I'm not. I am unable to hear. Okay, let's moving on. Uh, I'll tell you. So she is the founder of Writer Trust of Canada, a non-profit literary organization that seeks to encourage Canada's written writing community. And she has also been a uh, developer of long pen technology, which will facilitate the remote robotic writing of documents. Okay. And she, as I told you, she is an environmentalist and she also a humanist. So she has been named as the humanist of the year by human American Humanist Association. And uh, she has won various uh, awards such as uh, she has been uh, Columnized in the Confederation Poet, uh, which is a group of Canadian poets. And when she started writing, uh, now since uh, she has written a lot of novels, she is also uh, trying her hands at graphic novel. So she's, uh, she has written Angel Cat Bird along with Johnny Christmas, which is a graphic novel. And she is writing it... Uh, uh, in uh, order to like uh, nowadays we have a lot of graphic novels and trust me these graphic novels are also being asked in the exam if you say i'll uh, try to arrange one class on graphic novels because these graphic novels are also being asked these days so some important works of atwood are the edible woman surfacing lady oracle life before man the handmaid's tale cat's eye the robber bride alias grace the Blind Assassin, and Oris, Oryx and Cray. Now I'll talk about uh, these novels in detail because they keep asking these uh, works. Okay, so Edible Woman. There is a lady named Marion McElpin and she is dating a lawyer named Peter who wants a wife only for the purpose of show off. So Marion starts thinking her to be a commodity and she starts fighting for her self-respect and independence. So what happens that she starts throwing up, she doesn't like eating, she develops a kind of bulimia nervosa in which you keep on uh, uh, throwing up whatever you eat and you are unable to digest it, okay? So what happens due to this, she starts hating and gets irritated by Peter and Peter keeps on doing the same thing. She He tries to capture her, he tries to uh, uh, dictate her. So what happens due to that uh, pressure, she starts falling in love for a uh, silly man, you can say, Duncan. Okay, he's not very smart. He's uh, like a very simple man. So he start, she starts falling for him. And what happens one day when Peter asks her to dress up and go to a party with him, she doesn't want to go. But Peter forces her to come along with her. So what happens that she dresses herself uh, and as a as a ball in a ball gown like a lady, and she prepares a cake. She bakes a cake in the form of a woman, and she says, "Take this, take this cake and eat it. Eat it as." You have eaten my self-respect, my independence. And she puts all her grudges out and she talks about, uh, she just uh, says all, everything which she wanted to say. And what happens, uh, Peter starts getting angry and leaves the house after breaking up. And what happens, she goes and gives the cake to Duncan. 
and duncan as i told you he is not very smart he doesn't understand the meaning of baking that cake starts eating that cake very fondly very lovingly okay so that's a work which is also called as proto feministic work as it came in 1969 but uh, the uh, the feminist uh, these feminist ideologies which started coming up and uh, as we know they 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 were not give, given rights for voting so it came in 1969 itself but later on and this got book got published in 1969 so she has written a proto feministic work which is talking about these women and their rights and how they are not given freedom which they really want to now the next work is surfacing surfacing is about an unnamed narrator who goes near the town of cubit to search for her missing father and she what she does she goes and uh, searches for clues which her father has drawn uh, in painting and those paintings have no sense at all so she is coming to understand that uh, the life is not very easy life is as difficult as these paintings are to be interpreted okay to be interpreted so she is constantly having this uh, uh, dilemma in her mind of how to finding her father and how to find her father and how to understand that she has also been a uh, she has also been a lady who has uh, no aim uh, she is wandering here and there so she develops as an independent woman while this search next work is lady oracle where john foster uh, Uh, Jack uh, on the road and Sylvia uh, Plath Bill are also the reference of this work. Yes, yes, and uh, they see because it is also a feministic work, and she is not very uh, not searching for her father because she loves him or she really wants him to be in his life, but she serves so in a way, in a way to say she is searching for her self identity. Okay. and the next work is lady oracle john foster she is an overweight bullied woman and what happens she has a husband but she is having an extra marital affair with a man and uh, she starts getting some kind of uh, fake calls and uh, she gets tortured by that so she plans her own murder and she starts faking her own death okay so uh, do remember the title uh, lady oracle and the major protagonist which is john foster okay next work is uh, bodily harm which is about reeny wilford and reeny wilford is uh, suffering from a breast uh, from be- breast cancer which is also makes uh, it a modern novel because uh, nowadays there are a lot of works which is being written on these topics uh, where the cancer patients or the survivors themselves are coming up and writing their stories which are co- which is generally called as autopathography so i um, uh, that's my topic of research basically so in this what happens that the writer is himself or herself suffering from a kind of disease and they are writing to put their uh, mind out or to uh, tell everybody else that life is not that easy after getting this disease but they are trying to cope with it by writing these uh, works okay then the next work is uh, handmade steel so do you know what is a dystopian novel unpleasant yes, imaginary word it is it, yeah. it is a it is a positive utopian novel yes ma'am it is beautiful ma'am it's a science fiction or your superlative uh, type fiction uh, i think this kind of no. ma'am it is a kind of fiction which deals with apocalyptic world yes yes so it will talk about future which is very horrifying which uh, which everything is getting destroyed there and utopian talks about utopian talks about utopian talks about the imaginary worlds that is not yes. possible yes it some nowhere land which is not possible to have 
something which is everything is pleasant there everything is good there but that's not possible and this is quite possible because we are in living in a kind of dystopian world okay and the sequel to this work is the testaments which is set in the republic of gilead which is again a fictional world and it is about uh, a theocratic and totalitarian society which has been uh, replaced uh, which has replaced the united states of america okay so here what is happening the women uh, of this society are unable to give birth to children so the lower class women are being forced to go and make relationship with these upper class men and give them children so these are the du basically duties of handmaids where they have to deliver children of other people okay so there is a protagonist named alfred and alfred is um, basically meaning of fred matlab she belongs to fred okay so she is uh, uh, the protagonist here and she has been given uh, one uh, commander and she has to deliver the child for her but later on it is revealed that the commander himself is infertile so then she is asked to deliver it with the chauffeur named nick and this uh, offred keeps on remembering and she lives in a world of nostalgia where she keeps on remembering her own past and where she was very happy with her own child and husband but now they are no more there with her and she is kind of uh, uh, packed and she is kind of traumatized in this society but nobody is there to listen to her and she develops a kind of attraction towards nick so what happens that uh, at the end it is revealed that due to these uh, things which are not uh, supposed to be done by uh, this lady she has done it and now she will be given some kind of punishment and that due to that punishment what will happen uh, we don't know whether she will be killed or she will be thrown out somewhere we don't know so this is an open uh, ended book and the conclusion is not given and in the dystopian world we can always uh, expect something destructive to be happening at the end so what happens uh, at the end there is a book being written and the in that book this lady offred has given no mention because she was doing a, a job which was very important for these uh, men but it was not given any mention she was uh, totally made unaware of uh, the, her own existence okay the next one is blind assassin which won booker prize in 2000 and it is a novel within a novel and a roman eclef a novel with a key what is what do you mean by a novel with a key or roman eclef mam real life is yes somebody uh, from a, re a real life character will be uh, presented here as some as distinguished as not as uh, by their real name but by some other name but in this work what happens there is a novel within a novel so the blind assassin named novel is being written here in this work okay and it is uh, talking about uh, laura chase uh, who is uh, who has committed suicide and she is writing the novel but at the end it is revealed that laura was not writing that novel her sister iris was writing that novel and iris was husband uh, richard used to rape laura and laura got pregnant due to that and that's why she committed a kind of suicide uh, by drowning in the river and she made it look like she uh, uh, drowned in the river by uh, mistake okay so she committed suicide and later on it is revealed and iris is confessing all these things about the uh, adulterous work she did by having uh, affair with uh, extramarital affair with a man so she is telling all these things to her uh, granddaughter named sabrina and it has also a sub story which by the name man and woman in which she is revealing the story okay then the next work is hag see which is also the retelling of shakespeare's tempest see here it is named tempest and by tempest we always remember caliban and prospero but see uh, caliban is has no mention here so there is a professor named felix who has been uh, pro, 
who has been uh, given the role of Prospero in this work, and he is writing a play named Tempest to deal with the loss of her daughter's death. Okay, and the play is being performed by Anne Marie and Freddie. Freddie is the son of an enemy of Felix. Okay, so Felix is not ready to let them marry. But at the end, what happens as the play is Tempest, uh, he got an insight and then he said, "Okay, I'm ready for the marriage." So here also, Professor Felix understands the situation and allows them to marry. Okay. Next work is Alias Grace. Alias G Grace is a murder mystery of Thomas Kinnear and her, his housekeeper Nancy Montgomery. Okay, uh, it is based in Canada, and the murder is done by Grace Marks. So this work has been narrated to Margaret Atwood by uh, Susanna Moody. Uh, she is uh, Susanna Moody is also a very famous Canadian writer. I haven't included her in this work because she has not been asked in the exam up till now. Okay, but do remember and read more about Susanna Moody. Uh, she, uh, Margaret Atwood, has also written a work named Journals of Susanna Moody. Okay, and uh, Simon Jordan name is the name of the detective who is coming to research for this case. Okay, and this work is written in a Gothic style. What is a Gothic style? Do you remember anything, uh, any book which has been written in Gothic style? We have read British literature. So do you remember? Frankenstein. What I'm going to talk about is Good Bones. Remember, this is very interesting because it talks about the uh, a story uh, which is about uh, talking about Gertrude talks back. So in Good book, uh, Bones, what happens? There are stories about women who has been portrayed negatively in the literature okay so the uh, women who has been portrayed as vamp in the literature are given a space in good books so i have taken one story i made a project on it uh, gertrude talks back so do you remember the scene from hamlet in which uh, he is asking his mother that why did you kill my father uh, what did he do to you why did you do that and in that play gertrude kept silent do you remember in uh, Hamlet by Shakespeare, Gertrude says no yes, word. Okay, she doesn't utter a word. Okay, and here Margaret Atwood has written this work by a, a feminist perspective, and she tells about Gertrude, and she's uh, the Gertrude is saying here and confessing why she killed uh, King Hamlet, and she says, "I wanted to name you Paul, but he named you Hamlet." By uh, uh, he wanted to de uh, show supremacy over me, and he never allowed me to take breathe uh, uh, to take uh, any kind of freedom, any feel any kind of. Uh, she he always made me feel bounded, so I killed him. Yeah, I killed him. So she is confessing here that why she killed King Hamlet. So you can do a reading. I did it that in uh, Elizabethan age, what happened that people uh, were writing in such a way that women were giving very low importance and they were basically portrayed as negative. Like uh, you can take the example of Lady Macbeth, that she is provoking uh, Macbeth to do the uh, to kill Duncan. Okay, and here also you can see Ophelia or Gertrude are shown as a very uh, as very submissive women. They have no uh, credibility, and uh, here while we are in twenty first century, she is writing a book in which they have a say. Even if they did wrong, even if they murdered somebody, they have a say, and they are saying yes, we did it, and there was a reason for it. Okay, did you like the explanation? See, this yes, is, uh, and the last writer for today is Michael Ondaatje. He was uh, born in uh, 1943 in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, he is a Sri Lankan diasporic writer, okay? But he lives in Canada. And he writes postmodern fiction, combining the factual and the fictional poetry and prose. 
and he uh, talks about uh, free occupation with multiculturalism as you all know he has been there in sri lanka then he went to england and then he came to canada so he has lived in various countries so he has seen those cultures and the amalgamation of those culture so he depicts the bizarre and the exaggerated and unlikely which is not very regular something which is not very regular okay and he is also dealing with the violence which are depicted in the personal and the political life he has uh, on dache has uh, works which has a cinematic quality and he uses montage technique montage means you will be combining various images together to portray one image in which you will summarizing the whole story okay and she has uh, he sorry he has won governor general's award five times and booker prize for the english patient in 1992 okay so now i'll tell you the works of the, this writer because these are important so don't think that i have given you just for this of uh, making a ppt but because uh, these are being asked nowadays very uh, commonly so do remember these try to remember these what i did i made mnemonics to remember these works so you can also make mnemonics or if you can read it and remember it just do it okay because uh, to pass the exam you will have to toil hard for it so uh, he has written the collected works of billy the kid do remember billy the kid is a character created by michael ondache it can be asked in the exam then he has written coming through slaughter running in the family running in the family is an autobiographical work they may ask you in the skin of a lion the english patient which is the sequel of the skin of the lion okay and anil's ghost david sardero then cat stable war light and cinnamon peeler so cinnamon peeler has been also asked in the exam so in the skin of a lion what happens in this work that there has been migrants and the story of migrants and their condition has been dealt here and the title of this work has been taken from the epic of gilgamesh and uh, english patient has been written a sequel uh, as a sequel to it and there are characters such as hana and caravaggio who are there in the english patient as well so i am telling you about this novel because the it, it leads us to an another very important novel which is the english patient and it has won booker prize that's why you have to read it in detail and there are questions uh, they they will ask you questions okay do remember this and they have asked like uh, kirpal singh is a character from which novel and then who doesn't have thumb in his in both of his hands okay so i will tell you these things don't worry so what happens in this story that there is a canadian nurse named as hana and she is has traveled to italy uh, with her father and she has lived there and now she uh, since her father has died so she is going through a mental trauma and she is very psychologically upset that's why she thinks that uh, her father died due to burning okay and burning in the world war and due to the play is, is set in during the second world war okay so uh, the the lady is thinking that his father died and she couldn't help him so she has grown empathy towards patients so she is working in a nursing home nowadays and she takes care of patients so there comes a patient who has been burned and i'll tell you the reason how he got burned and uh, his name is almasi so his real name is almasi and he is from hungary so what happens that he fell in love with a woman named as catherine and catherine uh, had a husband named as joffrey clinton so joffrey clinton came to know about their extramarital affair so he thought of killing all three of them okay so joffrey made a plan of taking them on, on a in a in a uh, in a helicopter and then burning that uh, 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 of plane okay then and then crashing that plane okay so he, he devised a plan and he thinks of killing all of them 
and what happens uh, in that uh, crash in that plane crash clifton gets killed and catherine also dies but somehow almasi gets saved and he uh, becomes uh, a suspect in the eyes of the english officers so they think him to be a spy and they take him along with uh, them and what happens that uh, uh, that after 3 years he has been released but uh, he has got badly burned that's why he is now sent to that hospital in which hana is working and hana uh, due to uh, the same incident which happened with her father now thinks that it is her responsibility to take care of these patients or the burnt people she takes care of almasi as well so there is a man named caravaggio and who uh, he is a thief turned spy and he doesn't have a thumb so now do remember this that caravaggio didn't have thumb in both of his fingers okay so he uh, thinks and tells hana that caravaggio tells hana that uh, this uh, almasi i think is a spy and he has come here with her purpose so you don't treat him you just leave him and let him go but Uh, Hana, being so empathetic, thinks that no, uh, it is my duty to do that. And later on, another character is introduced, which is Kirpal Singh or Kip, and he is a young Indian who admires European people. And what happens that he is also training there as uh, men to become bomb diffuser, okay, or shapair, shapair, we call them. And she is. uh this man kirpal singh falls in love with hana and what happens that uh, he they both think of going with each other for uh, like uh, uh, to india because kirpal singh is working in uh, has to work in india he has some future prospects there but hana is not ready to leave the uh, hospital and what happens during the same time uh america drops atom bomb uh, atom bomb which is uh, at uh, hiroshima and nagasaki so kirpal singh uh, kirpal singh becomes very uh, turmoil due to that and he starts hating everyone and he thinks of almasi uh, as a uh, as a distinct uh, disguised person and he wants to kill almasi he uh, wants to shoot almasi but hana stops him and due to this uh, uh, in anger kripal singh goes back to india and in india he becomes a doctor he he marries and has a kid and what happens he keeps on remembering hana so in this novel we can see that the life of four people has been destroyed only because of the war which is going on so so they all are having no links no affection no sympathy for each other because of this war and they are continuously in a turmoil and they are asking questions with each other that whether we can trust you or not okay so uh, read this work in detail because they may ask you in the exam next work is anil's ghost anil tesera uh, she is returning to sri lanka amidst three civil war and what happens there she is going with the man uh, uh, sarath i till where i remember his name sarath yeah and he finds uh, she finds a skeleton of a man who has been murdered due to some political reasons and what happens they go to a sculptor uh, whose name is ananda and they tell him to make a Uh, make a uh, make a uh, sketch of uh, this man so that they can can identify who has been murdered okay and they are so they uh, think of it as like uh, they have found only one body but they come to know that there must have been so many killings done and what happens that due to that they start thinking that we have to fight for the victims of the war okay so that's it for today thank you so much for listening and uh, we will soon attend some new session